This video is an introduction to searching for materials in the CU Boulder Library's archives. There are three places to search and discover archives materials. ArchivesSpace, our online finding aid platform, the CU Digital Library, and Chinook, the CU Library's catalog. In this video, I'm going to tell you a bit about how to navigate the ArchivesSpace site and how to make a research request. I'll touch on the other two options briefly at the end of the video. If you're new to doing archival research, we recommend starting with our previous video, What is a Finding Aid?, which explains a bit about what archival collections are, where they come from, and how they are stored in the archive. As a reminder, a Finding Aid is a document created by archivists to help you navigate what's included in the collection and where in the collection to find it. Finding Aids for archival collections at the University of Colorado Boulder Libraries are available on our online platform called ArchivesSpace at archives.colorado.edu. With a few exceptions, you will not be able to access collection material like documents or photographs directly on this platform. Instead, you can use ArchivesSpace to learn about our collections to decide what archival material you would like to request to access. It's important to keep in mind that archival collections are usually made up of original primary source documents. The names of series and the titles of folders and items as listed in the finding aid often reflect the language used by the original creators. Try to brainstorm a range of possible search terms, reflective of the language that was more common in the historical period you're researching. One quick way to locate material relevant to your search is to click on Collecting Areas. This shows you a list of the major areas of research within the CU Boulder Archives collections. When you click on a collecting area, like Colorado politics and politicians, you'll see a list of collections we have relevant to that topic. If you don't see a research topic listed in our collecting areas, you can click on the magnifying glass to search our collections by term. Type your search term into the bar. You can choose search all record types or limit to collections. I'll explain that in a bit. You can choose to search by title, creator, subject, or other fields, but I recommend using the default option, which is keyword. You can also limit your search to material from certain years. However, not everything described in our finding aids has a date indicated. Or sometimes, a file is listed according to the date the material was compiled or created, not according to the time period to which the content refers. For example, this interview with labor activist Clinton Jenks from the Art Day collection is dated in the 1980s, referring to the time the interview was conducted. But much of the content of the interview refers to his work organizing mine workers in the 1950s, so limiting a search on labor rights to the 1950s would not return this result. In the end, I recommend doing a simple keyword search without changing these fields. If you click on the plus sign, you can add an additional search term. You can also choose and, or, or not from the dropdown. Use quotation marks to search complete phrases in the exact order. And if you're familiar with Boolean searching, ArchivesSpace does allow the use of a wildcard character. Let's look at the search results. On the right side of the page, there are a few options for filtering the results. You can search again within just the results you received, and you can limit the results by year, but remember that can be hard to do. Notice your search results may have a filter for repository, because the archive shares our ArchivesSpace site with a few other campus repositories, like the CU Museum of Natural History and the collections of the American Music Research Center. When you're ready to make a request to see material, it's good for you to know which repository collections you're referring to. Under Type, the first two options are important. Collection refers to an entire archival collection. It means there's at least some reference to our search term somewhere in this collection. An archival record refers to any level of archival description within a collection, so it could refer to a series, a folder, or an individual item, whichever level of description includes our search term. That will make more sense as we go on. There may be other filter options for things like subject, language, and names. However, very few of our collections on ArchivesSpace are currently tagged with names and subjects, so if you filter by a subject or name, you're probably not going to see all the possible results. Let's filter these results to something more specific. Within the search results, you'll see full collections, like the Boulder Valley League of Women's Voters or the Colorado Federation of Women's Clubs, and it tells us that this is the description of the whole collection. Within the search result, we can see an abstract description of the entire collection with the collection dates. This line will also indicate which repository holds this collection. You can see that this is in the CU Library's archives and not, for example, at the Museum of Natural History. When you scroll down, you will see those more specific archival object records, like this one's a file, meaning a folder. There could also be results that refer to individual items or even boxes. I'm going to come back to object records in a bit. For now, let's click on a collection record. 
As described, the collection page shows you a description of an entire archival collection. We call this information front matter. On this page, you'll see a number of details about this collection, including the title of the collection and the collection number assigned by the archives. The scope and content note gives a general description of the entire collection. You'll see the relevant dates of material in the collection, information about access, copyright, and use, especially for collections that contain media items, collections with preservation issues, or collections with potentially sensitive information that carry additional access protections. There should be a biographical or historical note that can give you information about the person or organization who created this collection. And importantly, the extent field will tell you the volume of the collection. That could be important for you to know when planning your research or requesting materials. Be sure also to use the Expand All button to reveal additional information about the collection, like an arrangement note or processing note. You may find a collection record that ends with this front matter detail. That may mean the collection has not yet been processed and arranged by the archive, or that inventory information for the collection has not been added to archive space. If you see a collection with little information on archive space, don't hesitate to contact us at rad at colorado.edu. We may be able to send you additional information. Most collections will have this outline on the right that allows you to navigate the collection. You can see it starts with a list of the collection series, but you can click on the arrow to expand the outline to see a more detailed inventory of what's inside each series. Before we try that, let me show you a more simplified view. You can see at the top, the tab we're currently on is the collection overview. That's the front matter information. If you click on the finding aid view, you can see most of the details of the inventory on one page. It starts with the collection level information, then shows the series level information for the first series, and then the file or item level records for that series. You can clearly see where these folders are located in the collection. Box 1, Folder 1, Box 1, Folder 2, and so on. It's still possible to use the outline navigation in this view. When you click on a line, it'll take you down the finding aid to that record. For example, Annual Report 1972. This is located in Box 9, Folder 7. In some collections, like the Anne Roy papers, there may be more descriptive information for an individual series or subseries, and sometimes an individual item will have an item level description and even physical detail information. This finding aid view is often my preferred way to browse through a collection when I'm first starting out. In contrast, let's go back to the collection overview. Remember that's a description of the whole collection. When you start to click on lines in the sidebar outline, it's going to bring up a page that describes that line. When I click on a series, the top of this page tells me this page is describing a whole series. There may be scope content information and other details that describe everything within that series. If I click on a file, again meaning a folder, this whole page describes just that file or item. Up top, it tells you if it's a file or an item. It tells you where it's located in the collection, box number, folder number, or item number, and there may be individual description and physical information about that folder or item. Sometimes on archive space, rather than a box, folder, or item number, you'll see a string of numbers that looks like this. We're working on changing those into readable box and folder numbers, but for now, if you find one, you can give that whole number to the archivist when you make your request. To understand where this folder is in relation to the rest of the collection, you can look back at the outline, or you can look at this line at the top. We call these breadcrumbs because it's a little path to remind you how you got here. The item described on this page is in the CU Boulder Archives and Roy Papers Series 2. A few notes about object pages. There may be additional information at the bottom under Expand All, so be sure to check there. If you click on an item and you don't see a box, folder, or item number listed here, you may have to dig down to a more specific level of description. For example, everything in this subseries is not located in one place, so there's not a location listed on the subseries page. I need to look at the folders within that series to find where each folder is located. Often, an item, folder, or even series does not have its own detailed scope and content note. If that's the case, the page is going to show you the most relevant level of description. You can see the scope content note for this file says from the subseries, meaning it's showing you a description of the whole subseries because there's not a more specific description of just that folder. If there's no series information, it may say from the collection, and it'll show you the general description of the entire collection, because that's the most specific information available about that folder. When you find the description of something that you'd like to see in the archives, contact rad at colorado.edu to request it. Try to include as much information as possible about what you'd like to see. Collection name and collection number, series number or series name, 
box number, folder number, and item number, however much information is available. If you're confused about where to find that information, you can send the link to the object record page to explain what you'd like to see. Some quick tips. You can return to the collection overview information by clicking on the name of the collection within the breadcrumbs at the top of the page or at the top of the outline bar on the right of the screen. Click the citation button to see our preferred method of citing material from the collection in your research. Click the printable PDF button to generate a PDF version of the full finding aid and outline, similar to what you saw in a finding aid view. And you can search within an individual collection using the search bar on the collection overview page. So finally, let's return to those object level search results. Remember that I said a search of archive space will return both full collection records and object records for individual folders or items. Within the object level search results, you'll see the type of object record, whether it's a series, file, or item, the location of the file or item within the collection, and a scope and content description. Though remember that when an item level description is not available, it shows you the next most specific description. That's why sometimes it'll say from the collection or from the series. And the item results shows those breadcrumbs to show what collection this is and what series or subseries the item is in within that collection. When you click on the object record, you'll be taken to that record page where you can see where the item falls in the outline of the collection or look through more material from that collection. Altogether, ArchiveSpace is a very specific platform developed for finding aids that describe archival materials. The more you know about the structure of archival collections and archival finding aids generally, the more easily you'll be able to navigate the site. As mentioned at the start of the video, there are two additional places to search for archives material. One is the CU Digital Library at content.cu.edu slash digital library. Increasingly, we have been able to make digital copies of material from the archives collections available directly online, including documents, photographs, and media. This platform also includes material from the MAP library and the library's special collections. Importantly, material chosen for digitization is usually a very small, curated portion of material from larger collections. If you see material in the digital library that interests you, there's often much more available to see in the archives that has not yet been digitized. Finally, as opposed to boxes and folders of unpublished archival material, some books and publications from the archives collections can be discovered in the library's catalog, Chinook. We recommend searching from the library's older platform at libraries.colorado.edu. If you see an item listed with the location of archives, that means the item is held in the archives, often as part of a larger archival collection. To search the archives collection specifically, click on Advanced Search. Navigate to the drop-down menu for Location and choose Archives. You can fill in the rest of your search terms and click Submit to search only items held in the archives collections. To find more publications from specific archival collections, choose an item and scroll to Collection Title. You can see how many items are listed in this collection and click through again and you'll see a list of all the books and other published items associated with the collection. The status of this item is noted as library use only. Because it's part of an archival collection, it can only be accessed within the reading room at CU Boulder Libraries. To request to see it, contact rad at colorado.edu. Try to include as much information as possible, including the title, author, collection, and call number, or include the permanent link for the record in your email request. As always, if you have trouble navigating archive space, the CU Digital Library, or archival publications in the library's catalog, reach out to CU Boulder Library's Rare and Distinctive Collections for assistance or with any additional questions.